Hey there, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works. Uh, we're located in Northeast Florida. Uh, and I do training on Power BI, Power Automate, Power Apps. And for this week's video, I wanted to do it on Power BI uh, with a very common DAX function called if as well as switch. So the if function in DAX, what it will do is it will do a logical check for you on an expression or a value. And then based on if the result is true, you can code a calculation to run or a set value to be printed. And then if it's false, it will run a different code or a different value to be printed. And what's nice about if is it's pretty easy to use. Uh, if it's true, do this. If it's false, do this. But what if you have more than two scenarios you're trying to code out for? Maybe three or four or five. Well, you can still use if, uh, and then when we use that, they're gonna be called nested ifs, and they get a little bit hairy to look at. They're a little bit harder to read. So in this video, I wanna show you how you can take those complicated if statements and translate, or no, let's switch them over to a switch statement. I know, awful joke, but let's not worry about that for now. So let's come and take a look at the data I'm working with today. And what we have here is some, just some play data where I've got uh, some student names and how many late homeworks they currently have uh, and what their test average is. And let's say I wanna give a reward based off of late homeworks. And I wanna say, hey, if you've had less than this amount, you get a pizza party. If not, you get this reward, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm gonna come up here and do is I'm gonna add in a new column. And I'm just gonna call this the reward column. And we're gonna start off with an if statement. We're gonna say, hey, if, do my logical test. I want you to look at the late homeworks and let's see if they're equal to zero. And if they're equal to zero, then I want to give that student uh, a pizza party at the end of the quarter. And now when I go to the next part, take a look in our function here. We have brackets around result false. That means it is an optional parameter. So you can either choose to put something there or not. Let's see what happens when we don't put anything there. So I'm gonna take out that last comma, close this off, and Prithi, great job, pizza party. All the other ones were not equal to zero, so therefore blanks were reported. So that's what happens if you don't put in that optional parameter. But if I were to come in and put in an optional parameter of let's say uh, you get a tardy pass for if you were not equal to zero, then Prithi gets the pizza party, everyone else gets a, a tardy pass. Well, what if I have more than one scenario I want to code out for? Well, what I would have to do is instead of saying, if you didn't find an equal to zero, print this, I want you to do another if check. That's the calculation, so to speak, I'm wanting you to run. So I'm just going to go down to the next line and say, all right, if it's false, if it's not equal to zero, I want you to check the late homeworks again, see if they're equal to one. And if they're equal to one, that's who will get the tardy pass and then everybody else will get no reward. Oh, sad, right? So we'll close this off and we see the results here. And we could keep this going. So if I said, well, what if they had equal to two, what do I want to happen? I would have to do another one of these nested if statements. Let's switch this over and use the switch command instead, make this a little bit easier. So we're gonna start off with the switch command. And with the switch, the first thing we do is we don't give it the test. We tell it what it's supposed to be looking for. Where does it need to look? And I want it to look in my late homework column. So I'm gonna say, go look in that late homework column. Then when I go to comma, where it says value, this is the value it's supposed to look for. So let's say they look for the value of zero. Comma, now what result do I want to happen? Well, I want a pizza party, all right? If it doesn't, if I close it out right here, we're gonna get those same results that we had at the very beginning with that very standard if statement with no parameter. However, with the switch, I can now go in here and I could put a, I could just say no reward. So that would be what all the blanks will now turn into. But the beautiful thing about the switch is instead of now saying, well, I have uh, two more options that could happen. Instead of saying, do another if statement and writing it all over, I just put the next thing to look for. If you don't find a zero, look for the number one. Uh, and if you find the number one, we'll go with a tardy pass, all right? And then if you find that tardy pass, what do I want? Uh, if you don't find one, and which would result in tardy pass, look for the number two. And let's say we're going to give them a homework pass. And then if not, no reward. 
So as you can see, it's a little bit easier to write, and you're not having to keep doing that if statement over and over. So switch commands, if it's a simple if, I usually, if it's between two options, I normally go with if, uh, but if there's more than two, I always find myself going to switch. Except we do have a little bit of an issue. With our switch command, it's looking for an exact value. What if I wasn't doing an exact value? What if I was looking for a range of values? That's where we have to make it a little bit more advanced. We kind of trick the switch statement. So let's see how that's done. I have another table over here where I have some screen time. And on this screen time, as you can see, uh, I have some, some children's names, missed number of chores for the week, and what they're supposed to get if uh, they don't miss any chores uh, whatsoever. Maybe based on their age, they're allowed 350 minutes or whatever. That's a really a lot for Sloan. Um, but you know, COVID times, we're probably putting our, our kids in front of screens more than what we used to. So I have an if statement that does a lot of checks for me. And instead of me writing it all out, I'm just gonna paste this in just to show you how complicated, not complicated, but how much in depth this could take. So this is going to do a check. The first thing is gonna say, did they miss less than one, meaning zero. Then they get all of their screen time. If it's not less than one, do another if check, see if it's less than or equal to one, and then multiply their screen time by 0.9. And I just keep this going all the way down. And so if I hit enter, you see how many nested ifs are there. We're seeing the results based on those checks. Let's make this easier with the switch statement. So I'm gonna put in a, a new column here. And this time, I'm gonna call this the, the, switch, the switch time here. And we're gonna start off with our switch command, but now with the switch, the, the drawback is it has to find an exact match. So how are we gonna do this with ranges of numbers? Well, we're going to say, here's what we want you to be checking for. Instead of checking for and looking at a column, I always want you to check for if something results in a true value. So we're going to use true. And true just says, hey, I'm gonna return the logical value of true. So now, all of my values I'm putting in, it's gonna see which one evaluates and gives a true. And then when it does, that technically means it kind of found a match, which it did, and it will give us our result. So let's say we want to take a look at the, the chores again. So we're going to go with our missed chores. And let's say if the missed chores uh, are less than one. Less than one, meaning zero. I could have just done equal here, but we're doing these uh, the less than. So I'm going to go the allotment time. I'm going to give them their full time, comma. All right. If you don't find that, what's the next value I'm trying to be looking for a true match on? So I'll just tap this on down. Now I wanna go, let's see if the missed chores are less than two. And if they're less than two, what value do I want? I want the allotment time to be multiplied by 0.9. And that's the great thing about uh, your if statements and switch statements, you can code out a formula that you want to run. And we'll keep this going. We're gonna go, just to complete the whole process, less than three, we're gonna say their allotment time is gonna be multiplied by 0.8, comma, then we're gonna go, let's look at those missed chores. If they are less than four, we're gonna take that allotment time and we're gonna multiply it by 0.7 just to get the same results that you see on the other uh, column here. Uh, we're gonna go back to missed chores. Are they less than five? And if so, we're gonna take their allotment time and multiply it by 0.6. And then one more time, take a look at their missed chores. Oops, forgot my comma up there. Let's go back, comma. Shift enter, and that's how I'm getting to these new lines. If you're new to DAX, by hitting shift enter, it moves you to a new line of the code, so it's just a little bit easier to read. So go to our missed chores, see if it's less than six. If it is less than, or actually we did less than 5.6, I think that's the last one I have to do here. So if it's not less than five, so we're gonna do everything else just to match that column I had earlier. We're gonna say, hey, after you get to less than five, if you still haven't found a true value, let's just take the allotment time and let's just multiply it by 0.5. And now when we hit enter, we should get the exact same results I did, I did all the numbers correctly, that I got with those nested ifs. So hopefully you can see how you can use the switch statement now if you were never familiar with it, and take some of those complex if statements and make them a lot easier to read. 
Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe below. Also, just to let you know, uh, we provide private training as well as on-demand learning training. And if that's something you're interested in, in going into a structured course on Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, SQL, um, Azure, we have so many uh, courses out there. Take a look in the description below for a 20% off coupon code. And I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,